I'm pretty excited to talk to you about canal preparation. Listen, the sine qua non of excellence was glide path management, but it's quite easy to shape canals that you own. So there's a lot of exciting things that have happened in shaping, and I'm probably thinking if you're like most dentists I interact with, about 10,000 of them a year, you're telling me you're overwhelmed. And yesterday's new instrument is already in the wastebasket. And there's over currently 30 systems in the world today, so of course you're confused. And I stand in your shoes with compassion because I'm confused. I'd rather you get really good at a couple things than try to jump from file to file. We need to look in the mirror and sometimes remember it's not the ball, it's the foot. That's what they say in Latin America anyway. And in the United States, we'd say it's not the batter. No, it's not the bat, it's the batter. It's fooling you there for a minute, wasn't I? But in any event, if you can get a system down and that it will follow the glide path on a reproducible basis, shaping becomes quite, quite efficient, very, very safe, and with an economy of instruments. Let's look a little further. Well, many of you have uh, understood over the years that Ruddle, at least for the last decade, I've been out there advocating ProTaper. It's currently by far the number one system in the world, and there's an old expression, model success, success leaves clues. So we have this system taught in over 960 dental schools to undergraduates around the world, and it's primarily because in the fewest number of instruments, you can get a preferred deep shape. So on the left, you see three instruments, and the third one from the left is just a little short one. That's one we looked at just a little bit earlier, remember? We use that to expand the orifice and begin to remove triangles of dentin. That's the shapers on the left and the finishers are on the right. Really, to summarize it all, there's increasing percentage tapers on the shapers, which means the instruments cut in selective areas. And dominantly, you can begin to appreciate the importance of the glide path because the end of those shaping files steer the instrument through the curvatures and the workload is pushed up to the bigger, stronger, and more efficient blades. That's quite different than other file systems in the world today. So we're cutting and shaping immediately in the upper two-thirds of the canal. The finishers have decreasing percentage tapers because if you ran a fixed taper, as an example, of 8% out over the active portion, you would have a giant sequoia tree. It would be stiff. And not only would it be stiff, it would blow out a lot of roots. So by decreasing the percentage taper, two important things happen. We increase flexibility and we conserve precious lateral dentin. That's pro taper. So if we just looked at it uh, briefly in a clinical op, uh, we could just see a shaper coming in here. But I want to really emphasize brushing. You tell brushing to the masses and the masses are, you know, they're doing a little brushing but they're really not brushing. Brushing makes the lateral space that allows the finisher to move right through the upper two thirds and do a little job towards its terminal extent. When you pull out these finishers, they're often loaded with debris. There'll be a lot more to talk about finishing criteria. Well, well-shaped canals are a great opening for disinfection, but wait a minute, I almost forgot we have a post-op film. This isn't complicated. This is simple kinds of shapes not so complicated, a little bit of curvatures. You can see some anastomosing. Maybe there's a little uh, offshoot in the mesial root, but big deal. Clean shapes that can be achieved through glide path management and shaping concepts.